Well, then Dave Batista takes to the microphone and says that, uh, or he, he puts over SmackDown 1000, him wanting to be there, Washington, D.C., his hometown, great pop for that, and says that he loves this crowd. And, man, you can feel just it's genuine with Batista, especially over the last four and a half years with how outspoken he's been. And you you heard on the CM Punk podcast about how CM Punk says Dave Batista sat on his couch and said, man, I shouldn't be in this match at Mania. It should be Daniel Bryan. I think a lot of that stuff contributes to this. He even name drops Blue Tista. And, of course, he does it on a night where Blue Chew does not sponsor us. Of course, we'll have to work that in somehow. Just like you can work it in if you go to BlueChew.com and use the code Fightful. That one's for free. But he puts everybody <laughs> over in the ring and gets a Triple H and says, this man has single-handedly changed wrestling. But the one thing he hasn't done is beat me. I like that, and it's true. Triple H, I don't think, has ever beaten Dave Batista in a singles match. That's pretty rare. Because, I mean, Batista owned a Triple H in 05. And let's make no mistakes. Yeah. From about October of 2004 through the summer of 2005 until he went to SmackDown, Triple H made Dave Batista with one of the great the great slow building storylines of that decade and maybe ever because that turn was Vince McMahon wanted to do it like that Triple H and Batista fought to make it the storyline that it was and it was a damn good one by the time Batista turned on Triple H I was ready for it and there were seeds planted before that so they hug but afterwards there's this little look off to the side, Warren. And when they hugged, I was like, oh, man. But then when there was that little look, Warren, you could see it. They're, they're leaving that door open. Man, I, I mean, Triple H's facials here were spectacular. Like, mwah, cordon blue levels of excellence. The, the close-up was perfect. You, you know how, you, you, you know, both you and I, Sean, respectively on our podcast, we we write a bit about WWE production and how they miss, the you know, the cameras miss out on stuff. But here, the close-up they had on Hunter was so critical and yes. important and essential. And they got it. They got the perfect angle. They had everything. The lighting, everything was spectacular. You know, he was in full cerebral assassin mode at that point. He abandoned party mode Hunter. And I was like, all right, you son of a bitch. Uh, we, we, I'm, I'm coming after you now. WWE production, when they're not worried about the shakes and the zooms. I swear to God, I was doing a live stream for Fightful Gaming where the Miz beat me eight times in a row, by the way. Go watch it on our YouTube. They have an option. Camera shakes. This is an option you can turn on and off. And you damn well better believe I turned it off. But when they catch stuff like this, it's so good. Alex, man, this is, if they're going to do a couple of old timers, this is a couple I would watch. Yeah. Um, one thing, uh, the, the camera always makes sure to get the exact right shots when they know they're going to have to put a video package together to, to promote the match later. Like, that's, that's what I felt like. I was like, this is definitely... All of these shots are definitely going to be the video package for this match. Also, I don't know if you guys caught this, but there was a little joking thing that Randy did off to the side where he kind of like sidled up and did a little quick movement that I was like, oh, the crap, they're going to do the RKO. And then they didn't. I thought that would have been great too. Um, I'm, I'm all for this Triple H versus Batista match. That would be a lot of fun. But here's the deal that I think sours it in my mind. Um, because of the whole Triple H has never beaten Batista, well, then obviously Triple H is going to put himself over in this match. Maybe. And Batista for the first... Like, to me, that seems yeah. like an obvious Hunter thing, but I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. We might even get that match, but I hope we do. But Indeed. hasn't hasn't Batista been on record at some point saying that he wants Hunter to end his career. Like he, sure. he wants Hunter to, to beat him and end and end his wrestling career for good. Yeah. Yep. Just do it, do it right. And I'm all for it. Oh, for sure. And you look at some of these things, it's like, okay, so triple H, he lost to Seth Rollins. He lost to 
Roman Reigns. He beat Sting, which was kind of controversial. A lot of people thought that he shouldn't have done that. He he beat Daniel Bryan, or he got beat by Daniel Bryan. I mean, if Triple H is probably going to keep doing these for five, ten more years. I mean, I think it's safe to say he'll be 55, still working WrestleMania matches. He's got to win some here and there. And he beat The Undertaker. That's fine, but occasionally he'll win them. Doesn't he have one of the mo- one of the worst win loss records as far as WrestleMania goes? I think I've said probably I, I, I overall, but I mean, even then, I mean, he's he's won WrestleMania main events, several of them. He, I mean, he won the the two thousand one over three. He beat Foley, Big Show, and The Rock. So he, he's won his fair share. He's beat Booker T. He's won plenty. But um, there was also a line in here where Dave Batista says, "Ric Flair." What about him? Can I tell you all that you don't already know? And he goes, well, probably a lot. <laughs> and they, they giggle and then he goes, keep it in your pants. And it pops everybody yep. in the ring, Alex. Yes, it does.